And then since I want to go a little bit darker, I'm going to mix my brown with my blues to get kind of some nicer shadows going in here. Mix my raw umbers with my burnt umbers and then since I want to have just a little bit of red in it to give it just a little bit more life and color. Okay, since we've got some of those dark colors going here, I'm going to swing it down here and put a little bit of a dark color going for his eye. I've got some alizarin crimson mixed in there as well as with my burnt timber and then my blues to give me a nice dark color for his eye. And we're doing this shadow here and we're also doing some more darker on the eye. Now with that dark I'm also going to paint the little bit of the light that is also around by his eye there. Okay, so keep your brush strokes in the direction of the fur. So when you get that on there, it'll be kind of like fur. Kind of work in your colors. Now I want to get a really dark color for underneath this eye over here. Now my goal of this picture was to make it look a little more painterly. So I'm not trying to get it to look like the photograph. I'm trying to give the impression of a big hairy bison. Now we're going to work a little bit with his nose. And I put a little bit of red in there so it'll show up a little bit red. We're going to do his nostril there the hair down into the, just before it gets to the nose. I'm going to take this, mix this in with a little viridian, get a little bit more of a fleshy color going for up and around his, his nose. I'm going to differentiate a little bit down around here. Whoops, that's a little bit too light. Again, I mix my darkest colors so that I can get a nice dark color going in here for his nostril. Okay, I had to make sure that I had his nose lined up where his nose needs to be and that it was full around there. I also added in some purple so that I can get some nice purple shadows going right here above where his head is. Right here. I like to add uh, a little bit of some odd color here and there. It just uh, brings complementary colors out and sparks and makes it uh, look a little more alive. And so I'll throw in a purple or a red or a blue in some places where normally you would not think that there would be purple or red or blue. I'm also going to throw some blue shadow in here and make that nice and dark. And then I will go ahead and add some burnt umber and some raw sienna here and play that up against the blue and the purple and make his head look all nice and shaggy and down around here I see how there's blues and purples in the shadows down there so I'm just carrying these blue and purple shadows down along the side of his head there and making it to where it looks like it's a nice rich dark brown or nearly black and since bison's fur are pretty matted, it's easy just to kind of scrubble your brush around and get it to look kind of like a big woolly bison. A good thing about painting a picture is you can do it the way you feel you want to portray it as or what you want the viewer to see. Um, if you wanted it to look like a photograph, you would take a photograph. But meanwhile, if you want them to get and feel the thick fur, then you can paint it on. And you don't have to 
get it to look exactly the way you see it. You can get get it to look exactly the way you want them to fill it. I've had art teachers tell me that cameras and pictures lie and we're not to be too caught up in portraying what the camera said because of course the camera lied to you. That happens when you try to get something that's 3D to look two-dimensional. There's, there's quite a few artists out there who they work from life and they generally that's that's the main area that they work from is from life. Me, I don't mind working with photographs. A lot of people do not like working with photographs for the fact that the colors aren't necessarily true to life. I guess that's one reason why I like to throw in odd colors here and there is to bring out a little bit of more life in the color. I moved the bison's nose out a little bit because it was in, a, in the wrong place. So now I gotta go back through and put a little more highlight in here. Again, that's one thing I like about oils. If you see something's not working, you can scrape it off and start again or kind of move things over if you need to. He's walking by some trees here. I'm going to add just a little bit of the background here. Now, with, according to the picture, there is a tree in the picture but I'm going to change the angle of that tree just a little. I don't want it up and down. I want to work with the angle, so I'm repeating the angle of his nose because we like repetition and balance, or repetition in our picture. So I am just going to do a little bit of repetition here by taking that tree and putting it in. That tree also gives us another direction kind of barky spots where it looks like the elk have been eating at it. And it looks like there's a darker tree behind it. And just give it some depth here. Show that we've got a forest thing going. Add a few more trees back here in the background. Now to kind of emphasize this horn we're going to put lighter green shrubbery back here. There, and so you get the play of color. Okay. Now, one way to check your values on your painting is to, squ er, to squint your eyes. And I noticed in my picture, the values are much lighter in the dark, and that makes the bison sand out. Meanwhile, with my picture here, the values are pretty close together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back back through and kind of lighten the values here in the background and push the background back just a little because I want I want my bison to stand out a little more. So right under here with all those little shaggy. Okay, I'm going to start putting in some of the dark here on this big one. So now we're going up his shoulder and then we'll add a little bit more paint to make it look a little scruffy, scraggly. And then I'll add a bunch of highlights because I want this to look like a summer day not a rainy day. So I'll add some highlights into his fur. Bring out the colors a little so that they'll stand out. Some highlights there on his one where the lights catch him. And a little bit on the other side. And then he's got some catching that here on his nose. What I'm doing is I'm just exaggerating the highlights that I see on this rainy day picture. We know that the light was 
was hitting there pretty strong already. Now bison fur, it's easier to, it's easy to build up the paint and make it look nice and thick. I usually just kind of swirl my brush around. Okay, now one thing I want to do that I want to show you is I want to smooth the background a little bit, make it hazy so it'll sit back in the back. For this, I like to have a nice fluffy brush. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to very carefully just kind of paint over it. Make sure you have a nice clean place to kind of wipe. And just kind of go back and forth. And just kind of haze it out a little. Get rid of uh, some of those big spatches of paint and just kind of make it a little bit hazy. More of a soft focus. And see that kind of just put it, you know, back in the background to where the bison is in sharper focus than his surroundings. And so it makes the bison stand out a little bit more. Like that. Okay, now can you kind of check it over? See if there's anything that you would like to add to it. When you start getting towards the end of your picture, you just kind of have to start thinking, okay, now with each brush stroke, am I going to make it better or worse? And you have to kind of figure out when you're going to, when you're going to say it's done or not. A lot of times I will get a piece done or mostly done, and then I'll back away from it for uh, either a few hours or or even a day or two um, before I look at it again and see if there's anything that I need to tweak or that I need to, you know, check and see if it's, you know, needs to be more, have something more done to it. So it's getting pretty close to what I think is kind of, is, is done. I may, within the next little bit, kind of look at it, see if there's anything I need to do to add that will finish it. Now, let's test it in our frame and see how it's going to be looking. And there you have a picture of a bison. And then after you decide that it's done or not, then you just need to take some time and sign the piece. And there you have it. Thank you for watching.